So the topic of calculus, you might be wondering why it is that I split it here. You'll see this is calculus derivatives, and I've got another uh, section called calculus and integrals. That's just because these are fairly big. I decided to split them so we can just concentrate on one part of calculus, and then we'll concentrate on the other one. Okay, so just so you know. Uh, calculus is very important because, um, well, it's the second most weighted topic on the exams. So what I mean by that is if you look at an average exam, the most heavily weighted topic is usually statistics, and the second most and very closely behind is calculus. But I would argue calculus is one of the toughest ones just because of the notation. And also because calculus is the kind of topic that needs you to know about everything else. That's why calculus is one of these great topics in one sense, but if you're not really good at all the other topics, calculus can be a real killer. So that's just why I want to spend lots of time on calculus in this course. Uh, some people call it calculus, haha, <laughs> but no. Hopefully you won't be calculus by the end of it. So you might be wondering, you know, how do I study calculus? There's so much to it, but that's why I'm here to help. I've gone through every past exam question, and I've looked at what comes up most often. That's why I have these very important topics here. So, the very first video that I have in this is Intro to Calculus. This is this very important topic here. Here I talk about how, what's the difference between uh, a derivative and an integral. So a derivative is all about finding the gradient of a tangent of a curve. So let's just say I have some sort of curve, some sort of graph like this, and I want to take a random point here. I could draw the tangent line at that. And what would be that gradient? How steep would that be? And also maybe even finding the equation for it. See, that comes here. Huh? So this is the idea behind derivatives, at least. Uh, so this doesn't really show up on paper one or two. So this doesn't really make any sense to really say that. But it's just I wanted to give an introduction to it. Now, derivative rules is super important. All of a sudden, here we learn different rules about how to actually do derivatives. How do we actually find this? We have this rule called the polynomial rule. That's the most common one. So I'm just going to say polynomial here. And after that, we have things like with the trigonometry ones, like with sine and cosine. We have things with exponential functions, like e to the power of something, and so on. And there's, we have these in our formula book. We have these rules. And these show up very often in paper one and two. They're super important here. Then we have, what if we have two equations times each other? We call this the product rule. So if we have two equations, like one is u, one is v, then we have this product rule. And we have two equations divided by each other, two functions, u over v. It's called the quotient rule. And those often, uh, those also show up pretty evenly weighted from paper one and two. Now we have something called chain rule. This is what do you do if you have a function within a function? It's a bit like inception, you know, sort of a something within something. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie Inception. It's from some years ago. But this chain rule is one that is really tough for a lot of students, okay? This is really, really tough one. So let's say you had, I don't know, like y equals 2x plus 4 to the power of 6, and you're trying to find the derivative of that thing. How do you do it? You have a function like something to the power of 6, and you have some junk in the middle. How do you do it? That's where I show you how to do it, that one. That one most often shows up on paper 2. Next, we have equation of a tangent or normal. This is when we're trying to find the total equation for this linear graph here. This is something that also shows up very often on paper two, at least most often. We have something called higher order derivative. This is like second derivative. In other words, the derivative of the derivative, or even the third or the fourth derivative. And those show up pretty evenly weighted between paper one and paper two. And finally, we have maximum and minimum of a function. So how do you actually find, let's say you're given some sort of graph, I don't know, maybe it goes like this. How do you find this local maximum here? Well, this trick is, is first of all, set the derivative equal to zero, because you know your slope of your tangent is going to be zero. And then we learn some tricks about what to do with the first derivative or the second derivative in order to tell if it's a max or a min. Again, this can be really, really easy as long as you know some tricks that I show you. So I try to build this whole story so that way you can do this all pretty easily. And again, this one right here is, uh, this one's mainly paper one. So these are the very important topics from calculus. Uh, okay, so if I was to try to make a prediction of what's going to show up on the next exam, or most likely, this is in order of likelihood. So in order of likelihood on paper one, you notice paper one and two are going to be the same thing because these show up so often. It's such a big part of what you do. Very often, okay, you're going to be asked for a derivative for sure, and it's likely going to be a polynomial. In other words, like 2x squared or something like that. So that's the good news. Those are the easiest ones. 
Second most likely is going to be trigonometry. Uh, so in other words, you're going to have some sine or cosines going on. And third most likely is with like exponential functions, like e to the power of something. I've even seen some where they do e to the power of sine something. So either sneaky. So this is in order of likelihood. Okay, so it's going to be derivatives with polynomials. Second most likely is trig. Third most likely is exponentials. Um, if you're doing these, you're likely going to be asked for maximum and minimum of a function. That's going to be the second most probable thing. And the third most probable is quotient rule. That's for paper one. For paper two, same idea here, likely derivatives, same order, polynomials, then trig, then exponential. But the second most likely thing is chain rule. In other words, a function within a function. That one shows up very often on paper two. And finally, we have the equation of a tangent line or normal. That's going to be very likely. So here you're going to be finding the equation of that line or normal. Normal is when you're, uh, something is perpendicular to the tangent. So in this case right here, if I was looking at this equation of a tangent line like I was drawing here, the equation of a tangent line, well, the normal would be that one instead. So something that is 90 degrees to this line. So that's the most likely thing here. Um, so I hope that helps you out. That gives you an idea of what's likely going to show up in what order. Uh, how about we get started?